Hand-drawn elements can spice up motion graphics, digital cartoons, and video footage. If you like to draw, they can be super fun and quick to make and procreate. But even if you hate drawing, or you suck at it, you might be surprised at how achievable some of these little simple clips are to make, even for beginners. Today we'll break down the process of hand animating these overlay elements, and at the end of this, if you still can't manage to draw your own sequence, stick around because I'm giving away a pack of hand-drawn impacts, and I'll show you how to composite them into your projects using After Effects. I'm Jimmy, welcome to Lasers Lab. Start with a new document, any size is fine, and prepare your scene by enabling animation assist in the control panel. The first impact will be a bit of a starburst effect, so I will also enable the drawing assist and set it to radial. This will copy all the action into separate quadrants in a radial formation, creating a uniform effect quickly. My first layer is now automatically enabled for drawing assist, but subsequent layers won't be. Since I want to use drawing assist on all the layers, I'm duplicating several now, so I don't have to go back and check the box on each individual layer later. Uh, on my first layer, I'm going to create an animation chart. This is a plan of action, and it plots the path of motion, as well as position and timing information. This is pretty crucial for creating smooth animation, and I'm starting with one of the most basic concepts here a straight line. Uh, I chart the motion using dashes and each one indicates the position of my impact over a period of time. You notice how I'm clustering them tighter at the beginning and the end of the chart? Well, that's called easing and it allows for a more fluid movement. In linear movement, the distance the point travels between A and B would be equal in each keyframe. Because I have the points closer together at the beginning and the end, the point will move slower at the beginning and the end of its motion arc. Anyway, this isn't an easing tutorial, but I urge anyone interested in animation to familiarize themselves with easing. You can use any color for your chart. I recommend a color that won't be used in the final animation. Uh, I'll set my brush. I love this Mercury brush, which is available in the current version of Procreate. By selecting the chart layer in my animation timeline, I can set it to background. Now it won't animate with the rest of my layers. I'll also go over to the settings and select a frame rate which is controlled in the frames per second tab. You can also tweak the onion skinning if you like. This controls how many of your other keyframes are visible on the current working layer. I'll leave those as is and set the frame rate to 12. I want the impact to pretty much emerge from nothing, summoned from the void as a speck, later stretching into a streak of ink. So I will start with a dot on my first frame. Next, I'll select the following frame and make a tiny smush bigger than the dot. On the next frame, the dot gets bigger, expanding outward, almost like the dot is flattened into a pancake. I'm thinking I'll squish the previous keyframe also, so I back up to do that. Now for the first big movement, I elongate the shape into a big streak, moving toward the finish, and continue to stretch it over the next three keyframes. This will appear as a very quick burst of movement. As the shape draws into its final frames, I begin to shrink and squish it again until it dissipates into nothing. Note that I'm staying pretty strictly on my timing chart. I'll play it back. Looks cool. I'm noticing that I actually drew two keyframes on one of the layers though, which wasn't intentional. Um, it looks pretty cool and I could keep it, but I'm gonna go ahead and select that layer and in the selection panel, I'll use freehand to isolate the extra section and put it on its own layer with copy paste. Then I can erase it from the layer below. Um, having two actions on a really fast sequence um, appear on the same frame is actually relatively common in older cartoons. And like I said, it looks pretty cool, but that wasn't my intention here, so I'm gonna change it. Up in the settings panel, I can select share. Uh, I'll select animated mp4 for now and just save the video. Now if I jump out of Procreate, I can find the very short clip in my photo library. So you ready for another one? They're pretty fun. This one I will do a little bit different. First, I'll enable animation assist again, but not drawing assist. 
I want to do a little cloud type puff that expands out in a circle, sort of like a cloud of dust getting kicked up from impact. So for my animation chart, I'll use perfect circles. Now I think I'll make a traditional timing chart here and I can copy and resize those circles in a similar expanding fashion, paying attention to the distance and size as it relates to the timing of the motion. So the smallest circles in the center as well as the largest exterior circles will be the closest together while the middle ones will have some more space between them. Once the chart looks sorta of not terrible, I'll flatten it into a single layer using the pinch technique and in the animation timeline, I can set this layer to background and create a new layer to begin animation. Get real loosey-goosey with this one, tracing the circles. I don't want them to be perfect. As I make the circles bigger, I randomly add clumps of the thicker line and gradually expand those into bubbles or clouds. It's super organic. I don't plan it. Just roll with it and ends up looking pretty nice. Towards the end, I start to break up the lines and everything starts to shrink uniformly as well. There's a logical order to the way I'm doing it. It's not the most exciting thing, but it looks pretty cool. Also, it's very cathartic. This sort of thing is a pretty good exercise in animating because you can get kind of loose. I did a few variations based on this one chart. I warped it in perspective and made a ripple animation. And as you can see here, I also made this sort of ground cloud. You can see how you're able to build on this sort of concept with more complex shapes and also add shading. And it made it look pretty cool without having to get too technical. The result is of course more uniform than a standard dust cloud, but again, it's pretty simple and it looks pretty good. So I'll export this one as mp4 also, and I'll do another version as PNG layers. The thing with PNG layers is you can import them into your compositing program as an image sequence and retain the alpha transparency at a higher resolution, which is great. Sadly, Procreate doesn't support exporting ProRes alpha format, and while their HEVC format does support transparency, it just doesn't play nice with Adobe software, at least on PC which is my go-to for compositing. So use HEVC if you will be overlaying the video natively on your iPad, but if you'll be sending it to a computer like me, you may want to stick PNG layers or MP4, and I'll show you how to import that stuff. So over in After Effects, first I'm going to import some footage to composite over. They're all different frame rates though, so I'll start by right clicking each of them in the project window and selecting interpret footage, setting them to 24 or any other increment of 12 to maintain consistency. Now I'll open up this cell phone hand footage and drag in some impacts to try out on it. I'll demonstrate using MP4. Both of these were exported over pure black backgrounds, so by dragging them into my comp and setting the layer mode to add, I can see everything properly and shift them around to put them in the right place on screen and in the timeline. I'll resize as necessary. Once that's done, I can set layer mode back to normal. Another advantage to exporting on pure black or white backgrounds is that I can isolate my animation's alpha using the extract effect in the keying menu. 
Dragging the upper point from the left or right will eliminate pixels based on their value, dark or light. Dragging out the bottom point will ease that selection, softening the edges for a more accurate alpha. This is definitely not the best way to do this. PNG sequence is ideal, but this way is a little more convenient for me, so that's what I use. Uh, if you prefer the PNG method, simply import your footage as a PNG sequence, make sure the PNG sequence box is checked, and interpret the footage to 12 frames per second like this. Once everything is laid out and the alpha is intact, I can also change the color of my clouds using the tint effect from the color menu. Remapping the black to green and the white to yellow makes this cool toxic gas effect. I like it. Now I need to mask out this finger to achieve the necessary depth for this particular effect. I'll do this easy and roughly by tracing the finger with the pen tool. I won't even smooth out the edges or anything, I'm just going as fast as possible. Once it looks okay, I'll select the mask in the layer menu and disable it by setting the mask to none. Now I can track the mask by right clicking and selecting track mask. For this particular shape, I'll use the method position, scale, rotation, and skew. This tracking is sometimes temperamental, but on a simple shape and movement like this, it should work fine. This spot is also perfect to start from because the full selection is in view. I only need to track within the limits of my overlay, so that works fine. Now I can duplicate the layer and set the mask to add. I could just place it on top and be done, but instead for some reason I feel like doing it the long way. So, so I'm dragging the layer above my overlay and under the track mat dropdown for the overlay, I'll set the alpha to alpha inverted. This removes all pixels that fall within the alpha of the layer above. I can adjust feather or whatever in the mask settings if I want. Looks fine, so I'll do the same with the other overlay. By the way, if you're using an older version of After Effects and can't find the track mat dropdown on your screen, look for the button labeled Toggle Switches and Modes at the bottom of your layer menus. Go to Composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. I'm sure you know what to do from there. You can basically do the same process for text or animation files and just have fun with it. If you keep them simple and black and white, you can honestly just set the layer mode to multiply or screen and be done with it. As I demonstrate with this little Thrasher's cartoon, These overlays are super fun to make and also fun to use in your footage. I'll be including a pack that are free to use on my website. I'll link that in the description. There's lots of ways to animate on the iPad. Procreate is awesome for little stuff like this, but it's not necessarily the best bet for super complicated animations. Do you animate on the iPad? Let us know what programs you use in the comments. And definitely hit me up if you use these overlays. I'd love to see what you do with them. Hope you all make some cool stuff. Peace.